Hey y'all, today we're going to be talking about business word problems. Now these will be word problems revolving around cost, revenue, profit, and then we'll also get into a way, into a way where we can measure some stuff about the market. So let's get started. Now before we get started, we want to review some important formulas that will come up in this section. Now as you guys may have noticed in chapter 3, in order to find a maximum and minimum, we really need a function. Once we have that function, if we can take its derivative, we can apply the first or second derivative test to find the max or min. So, here are some functions that are going to come up in this section. First off, average cost. If you're given a cost function c of x, we denote the average cost by c bar of x, and that's just equal to the total cost, c of x, divided by the number of items, x. If you like, an easy way to think about this is to think about yourself in a situation like this. Let's say I have 20 baseball cards, and the total amount is worth $100. On average, how much is each card worth? Well, about five, uh, about $5. That's average cost. From there, we want to talk about revenue when given a demand function. So given a demand function, P of X, where X is the number of units, and P is the price, of the, or the price per item, we could say that revenue is just equal to X times P of X. Now be careful, you will have to distribute in that x. Last but not least, profit is just a thing that we're used to. Profit is just equal to revenue minus cost. Like I said, these will all be useful because once we have a function in terms of one variable, we know how to find the max or the min. Let's start with an example that goes ahead and combines both demand, revenue, and cost all in the package of profit. So here's the example. Given a demand function, P equals 70 minus 0.01x, and a cost function, C is equal to 8,000 plus 50x plus 0.03x squared, find the price that will maximize profit. Hopefully you guys are seeing some resemblance to section 3.4 in the last word problem section. First off, read through the problem. Get a feel for it. We got demand, we got cost, we want something about profit. Secondly, Hone in on the word maximize or minimize, and get a function for the thing that you're maximizing. In this case, we want to maximize profit. Now remember profit, by the last little slide, was equal to revenue minus cost. Now it's our job to get a function for revenue and a function for cost. That way we can combine it to a function for profit. Lucky us, we actually have what the cost function is. So we could fill in this right away. As far as revenue goes, we need to recall one more formula. Revenue is equal to the number of units sold times the demand function. Simplifying one more step, that would look like x times p of x, this function right here, minus my cost function. From here, we fill in the blanks and we simplify x just stays itself, and sub in for p. 70 minus 0.01x. All minus the entire function, 8,000 plus 50x plus 0.03x squared. Now upon simplifying, first off distributing in the x and distributing in the negative, we'll get something like this. 70x minus 0.01x squared minus 8,000 minus 50x minus 0.03x squared. And upon combining like terms, noticing the 70x and the 50x, we can combine those. We'll get a function, negative 8,000 plus 20x, and then minus minus, giving me a minus 0.04x squared. Now if you think back to pre-calculus, you'll notice that this function is a quadratic. You'll also notice that we have a negative value attached to the x squared, meaning we do have a downward opening parabola, which does indicate we will have a max. From here, now that we got a profit function, what we can go ahead and do is apply our first derivative test, or our second derivative test. 
Either way, we need to get our hands on the critical points. We do this by deriving. P prime is equal to 20 minus 0.08x. From there, we set this function equal to 0. And last but not least, to get our hands on the critical points, we solve for x. So to do this, we maybe add over the 0 0.08. And then last but not least, we divide by 0 0.08. And if we do this, I believe that we should get 250. From there, it's up to us to actually check, hey, does this thing lead to a maximum? Now remember, a very simple way of doing that would be to get our hands on P double prime. So a brief check. Since P double prime of x is equal to negative 0 0.08, that means that we're concave down because of negative. which in turn means that since we're concave down at x equals 250, we will have a max. And you can think about that because our graph will look, since we're concave down, like a downward opening parabola. So the very last thing that we would need to do in order to get our price would be to actually plug in, since we're after price, what price will maximize profit, we want to plug in 250 to the function that will give us price. So last but not least, to actually get our answer, we would say price is equal to 70 minus 0 0.01 times 250. That will give us 70 minus 25, oh, excuse me, 2.5, which will equal 67.5. From there, we go ahead and write this, write this as dollars because we are talking about a price. And that will ultimately be our answer. $67.50. Now we go into a little bit about the market. Well, one way to measure the responsiveness of consumers to a change in the price of the product is actually by the elasticity of demand. Now for some terminology. We will call a market elastic if we have a highly responsive market. Now what that means is if you increase your price by a little bit, revenue will go down because consumers will stop buying your product. Think about it this way. If I increase the price of a Snickers by $2, there are a lot of other perfectly good chocolate bars that people are going to go for. That is a highly responsive market. Now, if the market is unresponsive, meaning I increase price and people still keep buying my product, we're going to call that an inelastic market. Think, if you're the only seller, of the price of insulin. If I raise up the price of insulin, the same customers still require that insulin, provided there are no other providers. So, by raising the cost up a couple of dollars, I will just keep on raking in the profit because they have no choice. Last but not least, we will call a market unit elastic if there is no change in revenue with an increase in price. One way you can think about this is by increasing the price, you might lose some customers, but at the same hand, that money that you gained from increasing the price makes up for the customers lost. We will get into the calculus for how we can describe these markets in math on the next slide. Now that we have the terminology, let's go ahead and talk about how we can mathematically define and determine when a market is inelastic, elastic, or unit elastic. The price of elasticity of demand is going to be given by this formula. Eta is equal to price divided by x, all divided by the derivative of the price with respect to x. Now in practice, when we are actually evaluating that at a given x, like we'll be in the homework, what you need to remember is to plug in x for each of these functions. For instance, plug in x for the price function. Plug in just regular x, and then ultimately in the bottom, the trickier one, is to remember to plug in x for your derivative as well. 
Now our market is going to be said to be inelastic if the absolute value of eta is less than one. You can think about this as in between negative one and one. Inelastic in between. Now elastic will be if eta is greater than one. You're just bigger than it. And last but not least, unit elastic will be if the absolute value of eta is equal to the one. Which maybe makes a little bit more sense why we call it unit. Because we have one right here. Now this will be actually how we determine what the price elasticity of demand is at a given number of units x. Let's go ahead and try an example of finding the price elasticity of demand when given a certain situation. So, for an example, find the price elasticity of demand at x equals 5 units when demand is given by p is equal to 500 divided by x squared plus 5. Now recall that when we have something like uh, this, x is the number of units and p is the price. Since we're finding the price elasticity of demand, what we need to do is find eta. Remember that eta was equal to p divided by x, all divided by dp over dx. Since we're after this thing, it might be helpful to go ahead and get our hands on dp over dx, or just p prime, the derivative of p with respect to x. Let's go ahead and do that. In order to get dp over dx, it might be helpful to rewrite my original function, since we have an x in the bottom, in the denominator. We could do this by making the variable negative, or the power negative. This is just 500 times x to the negative 2 plus 5. From there, what we can go ahead and do is derive this function. That will give me negative 1,000 x to the negative 3. Or, writing this as a positive power, we could write that as negative 1,000 divided by x cubed. Now remember, when we're finding the price elasticity of demand at a given x, we actually need to plug in x to all of these things. So, if I plug in x for p real quick, p of 5, plugging in 5 for x up here, will actually give me just 25. It'll be 500 over 5 squared plus 5, which ends up equaling 25. Now x is just itself. So we plug in 5 right there. And now ultimately we also need to plug in 5 for my derivative. So doing that, dp over dx evaluated, this bar means evaluated at x equals 5, which is the same thing notationally as p prime of 5. That just equals negative 1,000 divided by 5 cubed. Upon simplification, that will give me the value of negative 8. Now when I simplify this thing out, up top I'll just be left with a 5. On bottom I'll have a negative 8, so we get negative 5 eighths, or if you want in decimals, negative 0 0.625. Last of all, we just have to evaluate our answer. So this is the price elasticity of demand, but we could go a step further if I required it. For instance, is the market elastic, unit elastic, or inelastic? Well, we know that eta, the absolute value of it, is equal to just positive 0 0.625. But that is less than 1. Since I'm less than 1, meaning I'm in between negative 1 and positive 1, that means that my market is inelastic. Now that also means, by definition of inelastic, that if I increase price, that will lead to an increase in revenue. 
So yet again, as an example, we could compare this to the insulin market if you're the only provider in town. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. If you recall, what we learned about today was just really business pro our business problems with maximum and minima. So in order to find the maximum and minima, we actually need a function. So that's going to be the trickiest part of any word problem as usual. Once you have the function, go ahead and apply the first or second derivative test onto your critical points. The other thing that we learned today was actually the price elasticity of demand. This was a way, eta, to measure a consumer's response to a change in price. Eta was given by p divided by x, all divided by dp over dx. Now remember, in a given situation, remember to plug in x to everything. Get a number here, not a formula. Lastly, if we were to interpret eta, if eta, the absolute value, was less than 1, we called the market inelastic. This meant an increase in price led to an increase in revenue. If the absolute value was, of eta was greater than 1, the market was elastic. If you raise the price, you're going to lose money, lose your revenue. Lastly, if eta was equal to 1, the absolute value, we called that unit elastic. That meant that if you increase price, the revenue actually stays the same. You lose some customers, but you make up the money with that price increase. Thanks for tuning in today. Next time we'll be talking about uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes with limits as we go to infinity. Thank you.